Hey friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead, and it's another beautiful day here on the homestead. It's a Thursday, and the weather is gorgeous. It's unseasonably warm for uh, November here in Ohio, and so the kids have just been enjoying being outside the last couple days, and I haven't had to start a fire, which is wonderful, and we're just enjoying these kind of last days to get outside in the fresh air. But today, the kids had requested hamburgers and fries for dinner, I thought I would take you along with us um, and show you some of the recipes that I use to put together a meal like that. I make our uh, buns, so we're going to be making some hamburger buns, uh, some homemade mayonnaise, and all the other things that go along with that meal. Uh, first I need to get lunch on the stove and get a few things ready before we start school, but if this is something that interests you, why don't you join us on our day? Before we get started with school, I need to get lunch on the stove so it'll be ready when we're done. And so today I'm just going to make a simple chicken soup. I've got two quarts here. I butchered some um, roosters over the weekend. So I've got a quart of the meat in broth and a quart of broth. I'm going to put that in. Some radishes, celery and garlic. We've got parsley. This is some uh, minced onion. And then I've got salt and pepper. And we'll just put all that in the pot. Right, we've got all of our yummy meat and vegetables and seasonings all ready to go here in the pot. I'm just adding extra water because I know that as this simmers for the next couple hours, a lot of that water is going to um, evaporate out and it'll condense down a bit too much. So we'll just add water as needed if that continues to happen, but this is going to smell so wonderful while we're doing our school and be a nice lunch healthy for the kids when we're all done with our learning. So David's taking a little break from his book work. This is my son David. You want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> and David is my little baker. He's getting started on my hamburger buns today. Uh, David is 11, almost 12 years old. And how long ago would you say you um, really started loving baking? About two years ago. Maybe two, maybe three years ago. Um, he, I remember it, the very first recipe he ever made completely by himself, they were ginger snap cookies, and he brought them to a holiday gathering, and they were amazing. Everybody kind of raved about those cookies, and I think at that point, he realized that he yeah. might have a, a gift with baking, or it's something that he really loved to do, and he really enjoyed seeing people eating his treats, and giving him the praise, and enjoying that food so much. So what we did is um, Master Books curriculum has a geography course that as you're learning about the country they provide a recipe and through the course of that year taking that geography course what did you make? Uh, baklava, gata, this stir fry stuff. Uh, I don't really remember the rest of it. There was like this kind of bread. Yeah there were lots of breads and things. I, you know, I really remember the baklava that he made and um, Gata, is that what you? Yeah, had? yeah, that was um, the first one I was. Supposed yeah, to. and they were they were just amazing, and and he did such a good job making all of these items completely from scratch that it just really built up his confidence, and so now he can pretty much take any recipe and make what he wants, and so he's my baker. If I'm really busy during the day, I'll just tell him what I need, and he goes at it. It's really been lovely, and so that's really part of his homeschool curriculum as well. He has his book work and his core subjects, but if he wants to be a baker when he grows up, I want him baking as much as possible uh, so that he's that much more prepared as soon as he leaves the home and goes to culinary school or whatever he decides to do. And uh, so yeah, anything you want to say about, about it? Not, not really. So another little tidbit of information about my son David, you can see his lovely long red hair here. <laughs> My oldest son has twice grown his hair out for Locks of Love or the other charities that um, make wigs for cancer patients. And so David has been growing his hair out now for the last year and will likely do that as well, right? And then usually when one of my children makes the decision, once they get the appropriate length to cut it, I usually do a cut with them as well and we both donate. So when he bakes, he has to put his long hair back. <laughs> so that it doesn't end up in our baked goods. But that's something special about, about David. What a, what a kind thing that he's doing um, that will bless someone, surely. But with that, we'll kind of show you what he has going on over here. So David is starting. He's going to do two tablespoons of yeast with one cup of warm water. And what is it, honey? Is it a fourth a cup? Uh, yeah, a fourth a cup of honey. About a fourth a cup of honey. You could use sugar if you wanted to. We're going to use honey today. And then what he'll do is he'll put all of this in his mixing bowl. 
and then uh, the warm water will activate the yeast and the, the sugar and the honey will start to activate the yeast and that'll bubble up. We're gonna let it rest for about 10 minutes and then he can add his other ingredients. Our yeast has activated and David's ready to add his other ingredients. So he's doing one teaspoon of salt and then he's gonna add one egg and one third cup of oil. We use olive oil for a lot of our baking. And then he's adding three cups of flour. So he'll put all of those ingredients here in our mixing bowl and then he's just gonna put that in the KitchenAid mixer um, with the dough hook and let that knead for about five minutes. David's dough is all done being kneaded by the mixer and so he's just going to cover it with a uh, light towel and we're going to stick it in the oven with the light on. If it were a little colder in the house and we had the fire going, we would probably just stick the bowl by the fire. You just want it somewhere warm to help uh, the bread rise or the dough rise, but the light inside the oven seems to be warm enough uh, to do the job. So we're going to leave that for about an hour and then we'll come back to it. In the meantime, I need to get the baby down for a nap and I need to get bookwork done with my girls. start working on my mayonnaise. I started making my own mayonnaise about seven years ago and once I started I never went back to buying mayonnaise for myself. I just really prefer the taste of the homemade. But I do want to warn you that this recipe contains raw egg yolks and there is always a risk whenever you're eating a, a raw egg. So if that's something that concerns you, you could use store-bought pasteurized eggs and that eliminates a little bit of the risk but this is just part of making your own man uh, mayonnaise. You are going to use raw egg. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you the process. So I am going to separate out the yolk of two eggs and then I'm going to do two tablespoons of yellow mustard, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, one teaspoon of salt, and I'm going to put all of that into my food processor. Now, um, there are other ways to do this. You could put it in a blender. You could use an immersion blender and just put all your ingredients in and do it that way, but I prefer to use my food processor. Now, once I get those items in here, I will stick it on the machine, turn it on, and then I'm going to slowly add and drizzle in about a cup of olive oil uh, a little bit at a time, and I'll show you. If you pour all the olive oil in at once, it won't emulsify correctly, so you have to do it kind of slowly and be patient. I use this little tool to separate out my yolks, and then the whites I'll save to use in whatever I'm going to bake for breakfast tomorrow. Everything but the olive oil is in my food processor now, and this is just a basic recipe. This is just a plain mayonnaise. If you wanted to just spice this up a little bit, you could add some cayenne powder. You could add whatever you wanted to to make this a little more flavorful, but this is just a really basic uh, recipe. So let's get this on the food processor, and then I'll show you how to add the oil. 
Here's my little food processor. I've got it on and I've taken the top off here, the lid, and I'm going to drizzle just a little bit in, maybe a couple tablespoons of the oil, <clears throat> turn the machine on, and then with the lid off, keep drizzling in a couple tablespoons at a time. And I'm going to have to turn the sound off on this for a minute because it'll be really loud for you, but I'll try to show you how I do that. As you can see that turned into a nice creamy mayonnaise like texture uh, that's the key though is drizzling it in slowly if you add too much oil at once it won't emulsify properly and you'll end up with just like a really thick sludge that <laughs> is still usable you can add it to recipes or whatever but uh, but you want this nice and thick so you can spread it like a like a store-bought mayonnaise that's the texture you're looking for you want it nice and creamy I just store my mayonnaise in a little jar like this in the fridge and you're going to want to use it within one to two weeks because it can go bad, um, but it never lasts that long here. What we don't use tonight on our burgers will be used in something like a chicken salad or a tuna salad this weekend. Um, I even make deviled eggs and I'll use this in it. And I do have to say though that the olive oil or whatever oil you use in your mayonnaise will definitely affect the flavor of it. I found that most store-bought brands of extra virgin olive oil come rancid. They're already rancid when you buy them because they're just cheap quality oils. And that taste, that rancid olive oil taste, will be really strong in the mayonnaise because there's so much olive oil in it. Um, I've, I have better results with just regular olive oil, not the extra virgin. I feel like it gives a better flavor to my mayonnaise. Avocado oil is another really nice oil to use for your mayonnaise, but just remember that if you make your mayonnaise with an olive oil and you have that really strange olive flavor as you're eating it, it could just mean that your olive oil is rancid and you need to look at how you're storing that and the brands that you're buying in the store. David's dough here has been rising in the oven with the light on. He can go ahead and punch that down. That's the fun part, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and then what he's going to do is he's going to shape uh, his hamburger buns into little tiny balls that then can rise in the bun shape. Okay, so what David's doing now is he's just taking off a little bit of the dough here. It's about the size of a golf ball. Yep, and he's going to take it and he's going to put it on his cookie sheet and kind of flatten it down into a disc shape. And then as these little discs rise, they'll be your classic hamburger bun shape. You don't want these to get too big or you will have a massive bun that won't, <laughs> that won't fit your burger. So that golf ball size is just enough. David got his buns all shaped here and they look great. We got about 16 today. I've gotten anywhere from 16 to 18 depending on how big you make them. And then all we're going to do is place these cookie sheets back in the oven with just the light on and that'll be enough heat once again to let these buns rise and then we can bake them after an hour of rising. So we're going to go ahead and do that and then get ready for lunch. 
Our chicken soup is looking great. I kind of turned it up to medium so I got it bubbling a little bit because I'm going to add my rice. We're doing a gluten-free pasta so that I can have some of this. This is the Tinkiata brand. I buy this in bulk from Azure Standard and as far as rice noodles go, this one is definitely my favorite. So I'm just going to pour this in and stir it around and then let those cook until they're soft and our chicken noodle soup will be ready here. Okay, our soup is all done. It smells delicious. And I'm just gonna scoop this out. It's a nice healthy lunch. We'll fill them up and be really good for them. Lunch time! Amen. The yummy? Okay, it's been about an hour and as you can see our little balls of dough have risen up. Now these ones over here are about ideal size. You can see that as we kept going they got bigger and bigger. And because these are gonna get a little bigger even when you bake them, so it's really important to keep the balls about uh, golf ball size because those are good for kid sized burgers. Any of these that we don't use, like I'll save some of the larger ones and we won't use them as a burger bun tonight and they'll be cut up and used as like a roll that they can have with some jelly for a snack or at, for breakfast or something tomorrow. But these are pretty much ideal burger size over here. I have my oven preheated to 425 and we're going to get these in there and let them bake. Hi. <laughs> Hi, pumpkin. Are you so big? Are you so big? So our buns are all done and they baked for about 11 minutes. I usually do somewhere between 10 and 12 minutes on these. You just want them to be slightly browned. And I'm just going to take them off of our baking sheets here and set them in a bowl. And these will be ready tonight to be cut in half and used as our burger buns. We're about ready for dinner. We have our buns and our burgers with a little bit of cabbage and onion. Got our mayonnaise. That's going to be nice and tasty. Made a little bit of french fries and baked them in the oven. And we'll have some pickles. So now I've got a plate up for everybody else and we're going to get these kids fed. And that's it. I've got everything plated up and the kids are eating their dinner. Uh, hamburgers and fries and pickles. And I hope that you enjoyed learning a little bit about how I prepare that meal, our hamburger bun recipe, and our homemade mayonnaise. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'm happy to answer them. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and make myself a plate and enjoy this with the kids. I hope you had a blessed day, and I look forward to uh, talking to you again in the future. Bye. Bye.